Hello everyone, uh, welcome back and um, welcome back to the floorboards. So I'm just going to carry on with what I said in the last video, uh, show you how I cut the board for the end and um, and then lay the rest of the floor, but I'll speed myself up a bit for that. So this is, this is the board we fixed down and uh, all I'm going to do is measure the distance oh. The distance from the wall to the edge of the board, so say 68 centimeters, and take off one centimeter or 10 mil, yeah, to 670. So I'm going to cut a piece 670 to slot in there. Just bang my head. So 670, 57, whatever I reckon the meters is there. Mark that with a square, and I'm cutting it with a jigsaw because um, because we're leaving a gap. So this edge, the cut edge, will be on the gap. It doesn't really matter um, if it's not dead straight or whatever because the gap is obviously going to be covered by a skirting board. So so you've got still got your expansion. So it doesn't really matter if. Uh, if this edge isn't perfectly straight. So jigsaw for this is fine. Another thing you have to bear in mind, all these boards have TNG on the ends as well as the long bits. So you have to make sure when you've got your tongue this way, that your grooves match up with your tongues wherever you fit, yeah? What I'm doing with these boards, because they're the first one and this is slightly twisted, I will put one screw down through, like I have here, through the top of the board, and then I'll have to fill it in afterwards. Also, nearly forgot, I need to check that this is straight with this. Yeah, um, you can either do that with the board if it's straight, which this one is. We don't put it in the groove so have it on the lip there and that is looking good where it is. These are my little Hilti 12 volt Hilti's because they're small and light. I usually use them for sealing work. I haven't done any of that for a long time so really lovely little. It's a Hilti SFD 2A, lovely piece of kit. So there we go. So we may use this cut edge now in here. No, I'm going to have to get a hammer and an off cut. And then we're just going to have random uh, joints, yeah? I think. We'll see how it works out. Just, I want to do whatever it takes, whatever it uses least wastage. So we'll just give this a tap in with the hammer. Like so. 
we go, simple stuff. All I need to do now is repeat this process until the floor is done. Um, thing I will say, if you have, let me show you. If you have some boards that are twisted like this one, yeah, it's a good shot right there. If you've got boards that are twisted like this, just set it to one side and you can use them where you need a short piece and hopefully cut out the twist so you have minimum uh, amount of waste, yeah. Okay, what I'm doing now is cutting holes in here and there with this uh, fine multi-master tool, which is a just a vibrating head on, on the blade on here. Uh, and I have to do the same with the next board, so I can put a banister rail here and one there, or newel posts I should say, which I haven't got the wood for yet, so let's have a go with this. So here we go, we got the, uh, the building inspector along to have a look. Uh, let's have a look at this. Honestly guys, be careful what you buy, this is some of the worst quality floorboards I've ever used. I'll show you why in a minute, but um, yeah, it's looking alright. My solid floor all screwed down, as you saw, no hidden. All the, hidden, all the nails are hidden, I should say. What do you think, wifey? Excellent. Yeah, two little yeah. holes for the... Yeah. For the, um, well, considering how bananaed and um, uneven they were, yeah, I mean, you can see like, well, here's some on here. the edge here. I just had to use them different thicknesses, uh, different widths. So, here's an example. So, to see these ends aren't square, uh, and this board here is wider than this one, as you can see. It's only a millimeter, but that, that millimeter makes you have a gap, same here, middle square in this corner. Everywhere else is fine. Expansion gap. Expansion <laughs> gaps, yeah. And some of them have been, well, they've been planed, they've been planed off nice too thing. much in one place and things like that. And I don't know if you can pick things like this up. Planer marks in the, the top of the board. But I bought, I bought the boards a, a long time ago and they've been hanging around. And <laughs> it's not going to be a, a no. heavy. Uh, playing the marks here, but, you know, I, I know I've got to sand it down and make it look a bit better, but for what we want, perfect, but, uh, yeah, ideal. as long as the building inspector's happy, we're all good. 
Well, I want to get all the, uh, all my bits and pieces in. Oh, I've got to make you tables and things now as well. Oh, uh, well. Endless. So I just thought I'd quickly share this with you. See, this is our, the biggest orange tree we have. Uh, if you remember, we the one next door to it. You see how many oranges are on here? Yeah, and they're small. Not a great deal of oranges on it, yeah? A few dead branches and stuff. Yeah. We're going to prune this one in December this year. Yeah? Um, because... This is the one next door to it that we pruned December last year. And look how many oranges are on it. And they're much bigger. Yeah, so this is the one we pruned. Chickens are good. waiting for their food, I think. Yeah, see the difference. And that's the one we haven't pruned. So, definitely going to give the other one a haircut. Because uh, this one's looking really good. You guys alright? Enjoying that? Yeah. Okay everyone, so here here it is. Here's the uh, engine and that we're going to repair for Luke, uh, Luke and Sarah off-grid. Off-grid with Luke and Sarah. And the uh, first thing we need to do is clear this little area of tools and stuff, and this very important book which gives us all the parts for this baby. And first things first, I bought a big box, a big box of latex gloves. Uh, yeah, essential to keep our hands clean. Well, just because it's easy to you don't have to keep washing your hands, you've got these, these gloves on, it's uh, much easier. <coughs> so the first thing you're going to do is clean up everything on the ends. And as you can see, <coughs> bits of dirt here, this gasket here needs to come off. So the first thing you're going to do is clean everything up ready for the first... Oh, that was split. For the first task, which is to fit the crankshaft. Okay, so there goes all nice and clean. Um, what I will do now is get any any uh, form of water repellent spray. Now this steel here is all clean. We need to stop the moisture getting on it so it can rust again. So we'll just give it a quick spray and that's that side finished. Now we'll turn the engine over onto it upside down basically so we can fit the crankshaft and clean all this area here needs cleaning yeah uh, but before we turn the engine over I have to take out the three cylinder liners I mark them first because they're all um, machined in to fit each individual cylinder yeah so what I'll do is mark mark them with a black marker per cylinder and then uh, take them out so we can turn the engine over because before I put the seals in when we do the actual rebuild these are just loose yeah so if I turn it over they're all gonna fall out and make a mess okay so there we go uh, the three liners are out as you can see they're all marked one two and three and the other side of this one two three uh, so we have to start cleaning up this is where the crankshaft will fit obviously the four crank journals are here three of them still have the shell bearings in and one doesn't so we're gonna clean them out um, the camshaft hang on I could do this. Right. I've looked at the camshaft and uh, to be honest, it looks okay. It's not the best, but it, it looks okay, you know. So there's a few marks on it, like here. 
but the marks I think it's just been where it's been um, where the broken engines been laying because they're not I can't feel anywhere to be honest which is really good I don't know how many, how many hours the machine had but um, yeah they look fairly good so I'm quite pleased with that as you can see the only thing I'm concerned about is this is the oil uh, it's like an oil transfer pipe yeah um, it joins into the oil pressure pressure oil system here but this is the cylinder that that broke as you can see it's all new inside here and if I turn this pipe around ooh, there's a bit of damage on there and it's dented the pipe quite badly so if we can get a better angle I don't know if you can see that so what I'll probably do is uh, remove it da, 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 da. Uh, I'll find something to seal this end and we'll pressure test it with the with the compressor and um, put it in water and see if we can get any leaks yeah that's probably the easiest way of doing it if it doesn't leak it should be okay uh, I'll check that it doesn't interfere with it looks fairly straight here not too bad for straight but I'll check to see if it doesn't interfere with this probably happened when the when this all went horribly wrong um, so best check that out before we put everything back together because I doubt we're gonna get a new one of these to be honest <laughs> so anyway I think for this episode that's enough done on the engine but as for now it's olive season and um, the reason I've had to leave the engine for a bit is I've uh, done some pruning yesterday on Saturday and uh, alright turkeys I did some pruning and I need to clear it up all underneath the trees where I need to put nets down so um, I'll set the camera up and I'll show you what I've done So there we have it. All the um, all the brambles cleaned up. The grapes pruned fairly harshly, some of them. So we can put the nets down and harvest all of these beauties. Uh, our harvest is going to be down this year a bit, uh, like everyone's. Some places have only got 25% that they had last year. Uh, this is one of our trees. It's a beautiful old tree, but it's not doing particularly well with olives. Uh, it's a bit too hot for it, etc, etc. There have been a lot of flies this year. And we've had a lot have dropped on the floor. But mainly on this tree, not a lot of the rest. So, yep, we'll start harvesting tomorrow. I'm going to have to move the turkeys for that one. Turkeys! Yeah. Hello. So, this week, uh, first week? This, this week? Yeah. Um, we have our friend James coming from the UK uh, to give us a hand to harvest the olives, which is great. Uh, so, what I thought I'd do now, I've used a tractor and done all the trimming I need to do with the mower. Take the mower off, put the box on, and get some firewood just in case James gets a bit chilly. So, um, just about to do that, but I'll show you what I have to do beforehand. Hello, Wilbur. So, you know we've put the uh, fence up here for these wonderful animals, yeah? Problem is, there's not enough room between here and here now to get the tractor pass with the, uh, with the box on to collect firewood. We always plan to take this tree down, so I'll have to do that first and then
I think I'll have to get the shovel and make this a bit more accessible, dig this side out a bit because this is a, too much of a slope when we're full of firewood to be able to get up there I think. So uh, let's do that first. I'm just looking and given time constraints etc what I might do is just cut it off and lean it over, cut this one branch off and lean it over there for a minute until uh, until I've got time to cut it all up properly. Okay. So the problem I have now is that this slope will probably, well, if I drove a tractor down now it would tip over when I hit tight. So I'm going to excavate this side and put it that side so it makes it, so that it takes away the camber. Hopefully. Let's have a look. Just uh, a quick tip I'm going to tell you, uh, or share with you. Uh, so this is a pile of this tree I cut down last December. Good time of year to cut trees in Portugal because you don't get the bugs in it then. Uh, a quick tip on, so I'm just cutting up the pile of that tree, yeah? Quick tip on how to tell if your timber is dry enough to burn. Just r roughly, yeah? Bear in mind this has only been a year, but it's been a year of very, very hot summer, so... Let's have a look. What I've done, <coughs> excuse me, is cut uh, one of the logs, I cut in half down the centre, as you can see, which creates this big, long strands of sawdust. Yeah, and if you feel this sawdust, if it feels dry, yeah, that means your logs are seasoned. And as you can hear, this is dry. If I cut a wet log, that would feel wet and wouldn't make any noise, yeah. So this is roughly give you a rough guide as to how dry your wood is, hopefully.
here he is. Hello mate. Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to YouTube. So, here we are, it starts. Uh, we've got all the boxes, I couldn't think of the word. Uh, we've got all the boxes out, uh, all the olive gear, chainsaw, uh, varesia door here. Uh, the shaky thing, for, and um, yeah, we're going to go and set the nets up, and that's over here. Set the nets up and uh, pick some olives, and we have some help this morning from uh, Andreas and uh, uh, James. So, cool. Beats wiring up houses, eh, James? <laughs> so here we are, the, the uh, olive harvesting gang. We've, we, uh, Tony's turned up to help us now as well. So uh, having a bit of spot of lunch, and then come on, guys, get back to it. <laughs>
Okay, so that's it for this Tuesday, guys. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your likes and subscribes. Thanks for ringing that little notification bell. <laughs> that's got me extra ding. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next one. We're a bit tired, oh, you know, picking olives all day and stuff, but uh, it's worth it. It's worth it, yeah. So we'll see you in the next one anyway. Bye. Bye.